Hey everyone, this is MC. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a fade from zero to a kind of messy top. Uh, this video is slightly different than my usual videos because there is really not much to remove uh, with number one. Uh, there is lot, like when I usually do with uh, a lot of bulk, I use straight. Uh, a detachable blades with one and a half. Uh, this time I'm gonna use a plastic guard instead of a heavy duty first because uh, the foundation of the haircut is there so I really don't need to uh, worry about the foundation but I just want to make sure I want to clean that up and make sure that uh, it's smooth. So uh, I have to use one and a half because uh, uh, the teeth on the comb there are wider so it doesn't push hair away uh, and I just basically as I said I just want to uh, you know clean up the foundation and not create the foundation because foundation is already there all right so the hair comb I'm doing is on uh, Mr. Jared Jared was my uh, student for the week here uh, in Connecticut at my barber shop. He was attending a 40 hours apprenticeship program. Uh, I wish him a lot of success. He is from Indiana. He's a fine barber. Uh, I wish him a lot of success back uh, when he goes to his shop with all the techniques that he learned. Uh, with me from scissor work, um, uh, clipper work, razor work, blow drying and styling. So therefore uh, Hopefully it works out perfect for him. To get back here to uh, my haircut, I'm just cleaning up right now uh, the foundation. I am not uh, cutting from the bottom, from mate, uh, because I'm going to go and use zero there. So now I'm just going to finish this part. and then uh, continue. So that would be my first step here. Uh, my, my second step to this haircut would be starting my fade uh, and my fade is gonna start from zero. Now as you can see here I was talking about foundation of my hairstyle uh, it, you can see it's nice and square it's clean it goes straight up as you can see right there I'm going to keep it kind of square yet it's going to be slightly into a forehock so I'm not going to cut into a forehock but I will style it into a forehock once it's cut uh, once it's, the, the cutting is done I want to keep that nice square shape and then when it's styled I'm going to style it into a forehead. Now we are talking here about uh, the highest point in the head. Uh, the highest point you have to find the highest point in the head and uh, from that point on your hair should be uh, getting slightly longer towards the front and shorter towards the back. Uh, so you don't want the highest point to be the highest when you create your style. Uh, that actually, uh, from that point on uh, back, it should be getting shorter. From that point towards the front, it should be getting longer. So that's something to keep in mind. Here we are starting uh, our fade with a uh, outliner. This is a uh, Slightly shorter than five zeros is uh, half of a millimeter. Uh, it's pretty close. So uh, we're gonna get this very close to the skin uh, around the nape area and uh, temple area. And then as usually, uh, the only really thing that's left is to remove that line between, uh, uh, you know, outliner or skin and one and a half so fading between one and one and a half and zero is really simple i mean there is really nothing to it uh, 
it's quite easy, uh, it's quite fast. I mean, I've been fading like this basically forever. Uh, this allows me to perform pretty much any fade in a period of 15 minutes um, uh, or less really sometimes. But anyway, uh, to be fair and honest, uh, you know, the way I cut here in my system, you can do a fade or pretty much, or well, let's talk about fade, anywhere between 12 and 20 minutes uh, doesn't matter what type of fade so obviously if we are doing like uh, bold on the side and we are using straight edge razor to shave down the skin uh, that will take a few minutes extra because you have that uh, fine line that needs to be removed uh, removed in the end if you are only using uh, clippers that is slightly easier uh, but when you do uh, haircuts that are common in salons, such as uh, number one on the side with a taper back from zero, or like taper on the ear area, uh, this is very simple really. Honestly, this type of haircut usually takes literally about 10 to 15 minutes maximum. And then you have, you know, if you go to skin phase and stuff like that, that might take about five minutes extra. Uh, but here to remove that line between zero and one and a half, there is free, a few different ways to do this. Um, there is uh, fading from top down, there is fading from bottom up, and then there is a mixture, you know, going back and forward, top down, bottom up. So you know, but uh, if you want, if you want to keep your fade low. And you don't want to. You want to make sure that your fade doesn't uh, move high. Once you do one and a half, and you create that foundation for your haircut, and then uh, you start your fade, whether it's from you know half or one or like three zeros, four zeros, five zeros, outliner or even razor down to the skin itself. Uh, if you want to keep your fade at that level and make sure it doesn't go any higher. The safest way to fade is from top down. So if you did one and a half for your base, then you would use one uh, or one eighth of an inch. And then you will uh, work with, uh, I usually do open blade, halfway closed blade, fully closed blade. And when it doesn't cut anymore, when you don't remove your hair, you can't remove any hair anymore, I will switch to half guard. And then I'll do the same process I'll do a half blade, I mean a half open, no first full open, half open, three quarters and fully closed blade. Uh, and once that doesn't cut at all, I will remove uh, the, the guard, the half guard, and I will only work with the blade. And the same process, fully open, half open, the three quarters, you know, and fully closed. So uh, that's basically, and that will keep you your fade, you know, where you want, where you want, you won't run into a danger of raising your fade too high. Uh, otherwise, with time, you know, this is just like experience. With time, you will, uh, you know, learn how you want to work and when you need to fade from bottom up, when you need to fade from top down, and you know, mix. So the basic is pretty simple. Here we are cutting the top. I want to make sure that the front remains longer than the back. Uh, as I said, um, the highest point in your hairstyle, whether it's a, whether it's a pompadour or print or messy look or anything, usually needs to be right straight up on the, from your nose, straight up on your forehead. That should be at your highest point. From that point, it should be slightly dropping down and, uh, and the crown should be a lot lower than your front when you style it. You want to keep the haircuts for men mostly square in general statements depends on the shape of the head uh, but sometimes like even when it comes to like forehawks and I'm talking about like conservative type of forehawks not like extreme uh, where you can have a forehawk that you know well, there are certain trendy haircuts that I also call professional. Like uh, I have on my on my uh, channel, 
professional undercut or professional forehand, which I will consider this. I will kind of cut it almost square, professional look. But then I will style it into a forehand, you know, into a kind of trendy look. So that's very important. You don't want to cut too much into corners on the sides. So you totally, uh, you know, change the shape of the hairstyle and the shape of the head. Obviously, the best way to cut uh, for messy looks, for basically for forehawks and stuff like that, is point cutting. Whether you are doing point cutting with the scissors or point cutting with a razor, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, basically, if I was to do this, I would do razor technique that's called notching in my system, and it would give me that like textural look. And then I would do point cutting to give to create some deep. Uh, texture inside the hair for uh, better movement and for more texture. Here I did point cutting with scissors, as you saw. Here uh, I'm not changing uh, the shape of my uh, haircut, the, the foundation remains the same. Sometimes, you know, you'll see a hair here or there left behind. I like to use uh, one and a half with the plastic guards because the teeth are so white so it's not touching my uh, foundation basically I'm just it's just a guard uh, you know to control how you know close I get but I just want to catch those loose hairs and make it shiny and I mean um, sharp and smooth Mr. Jared here is from Indiana, as I said. Uh, he's a fine barber. Uh, he learned a lot this week with me. He was here Tuesday through Saturday, 9 to 5. Um, honestly, I think the shadowing is probably the best uh, uh, course of education that you can get uh, for uh, in our industry. The difference between this or any class that you go and sit into is really huge when, when you go into a class and you just sit uh, one is just uh, you are watching somebody uh, basically demonstrating a haircut for you uh, but here you get to see me how I do uh, certain haircuts and not just certain haircuts but within uh, you know 40 hours basically you I, I do pr pretty much almost every haircut that we do these days uh, you see over and over same techniques, um, uh, styles, how I execute the techniques. So that kind of, you know, you, it stays with you. Once you see a technique once, you might forget it. But when you see it over and over, it kind of, you know, stays with you. And then uh, all my students, they come, they bring their tools and they bring mannequins so they can practice the techniques they see and believe me it's not the same uh, watching and uh, having hands-on coaching if uh, uh, if one could learn only from videos um, no professional would have a coach uh, they would only watch videos so uh, any professional whether it's a martial arts boxer or uh, MMA fighter or tennis player or whatever you want, um, they wouldn't have these uh, professional coaches, they would just watch videos. But it's, it's a huge difference between watching and being coached. So um, these are really, really helpful uh, classes that one gets uh, when he comes to our shop to learn the MC Barber system. And here we're just going to use a straight edge razor to finish up. When it comes to the shape up lines, in general, I like to do them uh, on the dry skin, stretch the skin, 
and you just do short strokes you don't want to irritate the skin the, the lines get a lot sharper however you could use lubricants uh, you know for shaving shaving gel and so on and uh, for shaving the neck area and uh, uh, you know a beard uh, uh, around the, the throat area uh, I like to use a hot ladder machine uh, hot ladder is really good for that or any other lubricant you can use All right, guys, this is about the end here. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, watch till the end so you can see uh, the, uh, the testimonial from Jared about his 40-hour class. Until next time, take care of yourself. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. So I just finished up my first week here with MC Barber. It has been phenomenal. Um, full hands-on, uh, uh, right over his shoulder. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen some of the live videos, everything I've posted throughout the whole week. Uh, to be able to see, like I said, right over his shoulder to watch every uh, haircut, shave, um, Every technique that he teaches uh, has been phenomenal. He takes his time, explains everything to me. He's explained everything to me, so it has been wonderful. Um, true gentleman through and through. Um, and what else can I say? He's uh, uh, from first thing in the morning uh, to the very first haircut, uh, you know, teaching all of his techniques from his fading system to his styling. Uh, to his razor cutting, to his shear cutting, even to holding the comb the correct way, to his scissor flips and reasons why and reasons to do it and reasons to do it correctly, muscle memory. Um, uh, a person that wants to travel and come and take a course from me, mm -hmm. I love teaching them because they really want to learn, otherwise yeah. a person will not spend the time away from his family the money and everything just for you know just to waste time so for a big thank you to my family <laughs> yeah so it, it is honestly my honor to teach all of you and i don't hold anything back uh, be no, because be, because you guys want to learn and i want to give it you know so uh, i'm here presenting you the certificate of 40 hours that you have accomplished with me learning uh, the advanced techniques of uh, scissor work, uh, clipper work, uh, razor work, and styling. Uh, you had the privilege to see uh, in the, this 40 hours pretty much everything 
that I do. And the best thing of this is that you've seen it over and over. Yeah. Now, you got so much information in, in these 40 days that you really don't know yet what you have until you go back and with time, think things will start coming back to you. So, oh yeah, I remember MC did this, let me try it. It might take you months before you, before you try certain things that you actually saw here. Right. And that's why I'm thankful yeah. for taking the videos that I can go back and I can look on. It's like, oh, the technique, that's what I'm messing up on. Or, you know, um, just to be able to go back and review and see and uh, just refresh my memory on what I've learned. So I cannot wait to go back and practice and implement everything I use. So it'll be exciting. Yes. Um, I, I honestly wish you a lot of success.